check check one two okay youtube fam what up um man i'm gonna just try to be as laid back as i can on this tutorial because for this particular video i've tried to do it three times well actually two so this is the third time tried twice to do it live actually you know what it may have been more <laughs> anyways i've had a bunch of bad takes of this video so hopefully this is the final final the final final every uh, hip hop producer makes a mix and then they make final and they're like oh, car test didn't work come back the final final the final 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 alright I know that uh, y'all can't y'all not in close proximity of me but I'm gonna throw a breath man on anyway <laughs> My my new nickname for my wife is uh, Coffee Breath. <laughs> I've had a, a co-worker too in the past call me Coffee Breath too. That has no bearing on anything. Okay, so what we're about to do is uh, take Beatmaker 3 splash page and we're going to control it with the uh, Kyan PK Mini. Yes, and the MPD 24 yeah 24 so hopefully uh, you guys will get a kick out of this um the screen on my iPad may be a little blurry because I had to turn down some of the resolution because of the fact that you know so many resources were being used to record the audio side and so the camera other uh, camera angle over here is kind of messing up my render and so uh the, the, the other takes were just really bad so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started alright we don't need a session so I'll just click in new alright so when you first get started you'll see that screen that I was just at if you just bought beat maker 3 um, these are the pads here let's see if my pads are working yes let me go to my chromatic so one thing to remember is uh, when you are controlling your pads, they are set to a chromatic scale. So this is C3, and that's a, a C sharp, C sharp three, D three, D sharp three, E. E3, F3, and so on and so forth. So if you know music theory, uh, then you would understand that you know all 64 of these pads are uh, they are um, chromatic, chromatically ordered. And so um, I guess I'll get deep on this one since I'm recording. This could be as long as I want it to be. So whatever, you guys can kind of like scroll through. I'm gonna just get kind of deep. <coughs> I wasn't planning on it, but whatever. I'm gonna go with the flow. So, chromatically, these uh, pads are uh, set to a piano tune. So, um, you're at. Hopefully, you have yours like mine. You have it set at uh, 441 um, C scale. Let's go to audio. 441. Some of you guys are at uh, 16. Some of you guys are at 24, whatever, that doesn't matter. But it's tuned to C. There's other scale tunings in here, uh, like uh, Japanese, blues, pentatonic, and all of those good guys. Let's see if I can get there. Um, chords and scales. And so, let me load up a sample real quick. Because this has to do with MIDI too but uh not like it's not uh uber deep where's my champers i actually want the um i want a particular sample let me go out of this let me load up a session um let me go here let me load up a bank and I should have a star on this bank. P 
PQRS. Mm-hmm. I don't see my bank that I want. So I'll just load up this. Yes, I'm sure, whatever. Okay, so as I load up this uh, bank that I'm trying to get to, bank A, um, I have uh, one sample chopped up all across all uh, 64 of these pads. So let me get some audio here. So as you see, uh, when I'm hitting my uh, controller, my MPD, each pad corresponds with the pad on the um, Beatmaker layout, pad layout. So now, the way that, uh, your, your next question may be, okay, you only got 16 pads, how do you control 64 pads with a 16 pad controller? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, if you have like the MPD series, um, you get what you call a uh, pad banks. And so uh, what I do is I map uh, pad bank B to the second set of uh, 16. And then once I uh, get done with uh, pad bank B, I go to pad bank C. So, so on and so forth. So you have a 64 pad controller if you have an MPD. If not, if you have an MPC controller, like a touch or something like that, you can still um, map your pads out um, via the banks, okay? So I had to kind of go through that. And another thing like, okay, let's go to pad one. I'm gonna select that. Uh, one thing is important to remember that uh, Beatmaker 3 treats each pad like a track. I selected the track. Okay, and so then when I go to the sample section, um, like if I hit another sample, it'll select that sample. But um, while that sample is highlighted, let's take a look at it. Well, not that much. Um, I want to zoom in, but not that much. So um, this particular sample is now an instrument, and I could throw all kinds of crap on it, but this is about MIDI. Uh, if you look on the bottom of the screen, you have 16 keys, which represent pads for chops, but they also represent keys and notation. So it's, it treats that one pad like an instrument. And so if I play, uh, keys on my uh, mini I can treat that sample as if it's a uh, as, as if it's an instrument and so if I go back to pad mode and then I go to the keys uh, I can then begin to play that same sample uh, via MIDI as an instrument and so it was important for me to lay that out before I start going into, to, into mapping um, so yeah Hopefully that made some sense to you guys. Um, so normally you guys will just be looking at the 16 pad uh, layout. And you know, you can just put like, you know, one sample on the pads or whatever. You might want to put like a few. There's my hi-hat for this. Blah, blah, blah. And I can control that with my controller whichever uh, bank that you have selected up top um, is the one that you're controlling uh, with your controller but that's not necessarily how it has to be I mean if you're technical with MIDI you can you can route things and, and, and have ports set up from freaking one instrument to one VST in one bank so in one note if you want it's that technical so I kind of had to go and point some of those things out uh, have an organ here and uh, what I was trying to point out with uh, the chords and scales um, 
Like if I was to put this on a Japanese scale, that one instrument becomes, I know it's kind of low, I don't want to change the tone. But it's in the Japanese scale now. Um, you can go to chords as well. And uh, that's for my people that don't know how to play. <laughs> you don't play keys. Um, so you can take a sample and turn it into whatever you want. And you can uh, play chords with a single MIDI note if you have that selected. Okay. So, I'm turn those keys off. It's my organ. And I'm just going to go to a new session again. Okay. I'm not going to save that. Okay, now, starting out, you're just going to have this screen. Right? This is where things are going to get really deep. So, uh, I suggest you take some notes or get ready to start rewinding or something. Is this a good angle? Decent angle. It's okay. So, uh, the first thing that you want to do is uh, go to your drop down menu in the top left and there's a cog here that's the settings you go to the settings now you have a menu across here general MIDI audio you want to go to MIDI boom once you're in MIDI as you can see I already have everything laid out um, looks like it's a glare on the screen but maybe not that looks decent so here on the left hand side I have all of my networked instruments okay um, there's my uh, MPK, there's my uh, MPD, and my little nail control uh, for faders. Oh yeah, let me point out, once you go to the mixer, these uh, faders and the panning, the sins are not mappable quite yet, okay? So, keep that in mind before you get ready to connect your Mackie. <laughs> Alright, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's go back to MIDI. Sorry, I shouldn't have candy, but uh, that's one of my weaknesses. Uh, so uh, you can also set up outputs, like I was telling you guys about routing. You can route things in and you can also route things out. So keep in mind that you can uh, uh, connect uh, hardware, like this is my hardware, my freaking MPK Mini and my freaking uh, uh, MPD, I could have whatever else hooked up to it and then all of these uh, output devices would uh, be triggered and I could just run something through uh, BM3, BMaker 3 to trigger, I don't know, just some sound module or something and then run the audio back into uh, this section and then just have my ins and outs set up like oh I want this coming in, I want that going out and blah 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 but this is not an audio tutorial you have to come back for that one. So, MIDI section. So all of that's over here on the right side. Also, you can connect your Bluetooth MIDI joint. Um, and then, uh, <coughs> excuse me, y'all. For uh, <laughs> the left-hand side has all of the <coughs> MIDI bindings. And so the focus action here is uh, trigger pad one. And so you can see here it says I Akai MPD 24 channel one note 36 C1. So the MPD has three ports. Some of your MIDI instruments have more than one port because it may have more than one binding um, or more than one way to bind instruments or, or, or MIDI notes. So, I guess in layman's terms, your pads are on one port, your faders are on another port, and then your knobs are on another port. So there's three different ports that have to connect here. So you got a Kai MPD 24, a MPD 24, a MPD 24 port three. So each one of these ports controls a different uh, section of the MPD. And uh, it's uh, the same way on other instruments, but the way that I have my Akai PK Mini routed, I just have my pads on uh, channel 10 
and I have my keys on MIDI channel 1 because it does recognize the MIDI channel as well uh, it recognizes the notes whether it's a knob or whether it's a fader and it will tell you the behavior as well and uh, if you don't like a binding you can just hit clear bloop it's gone and you can highlight it and then just hit the note again alright so that brings me to my next section I'm going to erase all of my bindings never do that <laughs> ever in your life or you'll be pissed off alright so um, I just erased all of my bindings so that I can show you guys how to um, map out your instruments so as you can see everything is empty the easiest way to map in Beatmaker 3 is to use the auto line function I don't like the auto line function but if you're a beginner and you have a simple controller this is the best way to do it bottom in the center there's an auto line button once you hit that trigger pad 1 highlights you just hit pad 1 on your controller it automatically goes to pad 2 pad 3 and so on and so forth until you get done so basically if you have a 64 controller device you would uh, continue to do this until you got to the 64th pad okay so uh, I'm done with all 16 now I'm gonna go to bank B and then send a new set of 16 I'm not sure if it's picking up on these because I need to scroll but I don't want to stop pressing pads okay so um, oh yeah I didn't have it on 64 channel device so I'm gonna have to clear all <laughs> it was learning uh, it was MIDI learning for some other stuff okay let me turn my Wi-Fi off on this because I don't want my Instagram stuff popping up and all YouTube and all of that okay so um, I'm gonna hit stop learn because I, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like the auto learn function because I like to tweak each individual binding so if there's a fader that only goes up so far or only goes right so far whatever I like to know that the, in the increments increments are tweaked perfectly and that's one thing that Beatmaker does great it does recognize that the Kai PK Mini knobs have a max the way that they go to the right and the way that they go to the left they don't rotate fully around and don't stop whereas the knobs on the MPD they fully rotate forever and so Beatmaker 3 recognizes those increments and uh, sets the max and sets the minimum so we'll get to that um, so instead of auto learn uh, what I like to do is highlight each one myself just because I'm uh, I guess uh, like some of my friends would say I'm OCD like that <laughs> I don't know why um, it's cool in 2017 to uh, brag on uh, mental disorders but here's a fun fact the CDC said that by 2020 uh, half of all Americans will be dealing with some form of mental uh, sickness and the lead is depression so one way um, to get over depression if you're one of those people and I'm not a doctor but uh I deal with a little depression every now and then is to do a MIDI binding and make a beat and making a beat always helps me to get over depression or frustration like when I just do the same thing that I just did over without hitting 64 pad device okay pad 17 alright so um, you guys get the gist of what you're supposed to be doing here um, I'm not gonna sit here and bind every freaking pad uh, so 
you'll trigger all the pads all the way down to the 64th pad all right so now macro macro control are these little guys let's see if I can pull up a um I need to pull up a sample to be able to pull up the keys I think yeah so let me jam a sample in here real quick or a bank hopefully B maker won't crash on me it looks like it's running pretty stable so let's pull up a uh, child main that's a pretty good cool scent all right um let me go to the keys so the macros are these knobs and so basically what the knobs do on the kind of became mini is control V so you can set this macro up to be any effect that you want to be or volume or panning um, you can uh, it, it, it uh, records automation as well so keep in mind you know you got a lot of options uh, the uh, the uh, I'm at a loss of words I'm at a loss for words the automation records I think increments of uh, 196 or free it may be 164 so you know keep that in mind if you're like really really technical with your you know MIDI and quantize alright so uh, that's kinda important to some of you guys some of you guys you don't care you just wanna hit the go button so um, one would control compression on this instrument so I'll go to the cog and I'll go to MIDI Oops blah 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 I'll go to cog and then I'll go to MIDI and then I'll go to that particular macro control one highlight it and then I'll tweak my mini real quick channel uh, knob one and it should read how far left and how far right there we go so now it says MPK mini two channel one CC one right so when I go to that particular instrument on uh, the keys I should be able to tweak the compression with my MIDI knob okay so no matter what type of controller that you have yum 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 <laughs> yum 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 kids don't do drugs um, <laughs> no matter what type of uh, controller you have you can uh, you can route your macros to your knobs um, you could also route the macros to your keys if you want um, I don't see how that would be uh, practical you could map them to your faders that's more practical and just kinda like fade them up fade them down whatever um, if that's the type of thing that you into um, whatever floats your boat and uh, rocks your socks uh, that's what I say so bada bing you route your macros knob 2 right I routed them to a pad by accident on the MPD earlier so forget about it huh? alright so boom so macro 3 and I'll just do the first four so you guys got a good idea turn the guy all the way right and turn him all the way left so that Beatmaker 3 can recognize uh, the increments and it will pick up on that on the macro by the being so Number three is the wow rate. So let's listen to the wow rate while we play it. All right, so that wasn't like a huge thing. Maybe. Let's route the chorus real quick because I want you guys to actually I'm gonna route all of them because I want you guys to get a really good idea about what the heck we're doing here. <laughs> this is a really big deal. Um, I'm kind of trying to harness a tidal wave here because of the fact that this tech is uh, so fascinating, so new, and so awesome. Um, I think kids should be able to get their hands on it. 
um, all over the world, man. All the kids all over the world should be able to get their hands on this type of text so that they can create. And uh, some of you old geezers too. So you get, uh, let's see, nine, four, five, six. This is seven. So you get 16 macros, bro. So what I, what I normally do is I'll map out uh, the first eight on my mini. And then the second eight I will map out on my MPD or vice versa. It just depends on, you know, how I'm feeling that particular day. Macro control, you see MPK Mini 2, channel 1, CC8. That's knob 8. So now I'm going to go to knob K7 on my MPD. This one just kind of goes on forever, so I just kind of give it a couple tweaks in both directions. And uh, there it is, MPD 24. Uh, channel 1 CC 10 and then you just keep going right so you guys got the gist that's pretty much how you map uh, in uh, Beatmaker 3 from uh, your pads to your knobs um, to your bank selection now with the bank selection what I like to do with my mini I'll hit CC um, and you can go from bank A to bank B and CC as well, just like with the uh, pad control. But I'll go to uh, bank A and uh, I'll uh, hit select bank A and then I'll hit pad uh, 1. And so uh, instead of using my uh, CCs for, I don't know, uh, triggering extra, uh, I guess, drum sounds or whatever. I just use it to switch between banks and uh, in uh, BeatMaker 3 and it just makes things a little bit faster. It's not uh, it's not anything uh, special. Uh, it just makes your workflow faster to be able to switch between banks. And so you get banks A through uh, H and of course you have uh, 8 pads on your mini. So A through H works out perfectly for you if you have a mini. If not, you know, um, you could always uh, grab like a Korg uh, micro control or something like that. It's got eight pads on it. And then uh, you could just use it for switching through banks. If you're rich like that, you know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't got, you know. Actually, you could probably find those on eBay pretty cheap. Okay, so you can switch between banks with, uh, I don't know, you could use anything for that. A knob, a pad, a key, anything with a MIDI signal. Uh, you can octave up and octave down um, and you can uh, set up your repeat slot now what repeat slots are I highlighted that for nothing <laughs> okay I'm gonna hit CC bank uh, bank B pad one for repeat slot so what a repeat slot is is these guys repeat slot one you can uh, this is one of the things that's really dope about me banker is that you can tweak uh, what you want each repeat slot to do so in this case it's a uh, one fourth I can make it triplets of dotted notes and then I can even put a swing on it and uh, right now uh, let's just say I want to play uh, 1 16th notes and uh, when I'm holding the pad I could also use that to um, I could do that with the pad uh, on the mini so um, let me make sure I'm hitting the right note fourth notes so it's hitting fourth notes because I'm, I'm holding the pad down. Um, so you can set that up um, that way. Um, you can also, uh, what else can you do? You could tweak this. So let's just say I want, instead of 116 triplets, I want 116 dotted notes. And so uh, the MIDI is, is totally tweakable um, via the the screen interface uh, with your MIDI notes as well so you can set up your repeat slots 
right? <laughs> um, transport. Uh, this is a biggie. Um, my MPD has a transport bar uh, with a MMC integration, and so most DAWs and BMaker Three accept MMC code, so you don't have to map that out. It just automatically recognizes MMC, machine MIDI control or MIDI machine control, something like that. Now, if you don't have a device with MIDI machine control uh, transport bar, then uh, you may want to get one. Uh, and once you get one that needs to be mapped out, your transport your transport bar is totally mappable as well. I'll just hit my play button here. Bada bing, nano control slider knob. No nah, man, that's not a knob. Maybe that's just the way that it recognizes the name. Yeah. Okay, so that's my play button. Um, I'll just map my stop button. Um, I'll map my record button. My backward button, which is really helpful when you're looping and my forward button which is helpful when you're looping as well when you get your good sample going and then you need to like, let me check this section alright so oh yeah my looper let me map that out turn your loop off and on that's cool when you select a section like you select the sample um, let's see metronome and tempo I don't want to set up my tap tempo or my metronome right now but it's good to have let you guys know that it's there so um setting up the loop on and off in um, your MIDI or with your controller is uh, always good because uh, like uh, I don't know why that started playing stop probably because I dragged the loop on um, you can hit your loop button and turn the loop on and off and so when you get ready to play something as you can see this uh, loop indicator is uh, going off and on and it's highlighting here um, that's good when you're playing and you're auditioning different sounds or you may drag a loop in like let me see how the sound pull it out whatever let me loop this over and tweak this section or whatever so it's cool to have your loop mapped out to a button um, again your faders on your mixer you can't do anything yet with MIDI and you can't uh, uh, mute or solo that's one thing that I liked about Beatmaker 2 that uh, there was a learn section for this area and uh, you could just highlight it and then freaking tweak it and then it'll it'll remember it but uh, keep in mind that uh, this is the first uh, release of Beatmaker so maybe in an update they'll add that tweak so now uh, I showed you guys how to map out this entire uh, interface beatmaker 3 interface that is pretty much the gist of everything that you can do as far as the uh, local bindings in this particular uh, offering of beatmaker 3 so you guys are pretty much set the last and most important thing that you need to remember is that let's just say I like this binding and I want to keep this I can always hit save I'll get a uh, dialog pop up bling and then I'll just save this as a MIDI template which is really cool because uh, what they offer in this particular uh, app is a file tree where you can go inside of your uh, beat maker and find your presets uh, you can store MIDI maps templates um, and of course your samples and things like that um, there's all kinds of samples I got up in here um, and it also has the auto play so while you're you know when you're editing and things like that you can just pop your samples out of your file tree um, and this is not about sampling I don't know why I went to samples uh, just feel like making a beat I guess and so uh, you can also um, let's just say you come up with a nice MIDI map bada bing you have a MIDI map in here and your guy says hey man 
uh, shoot me over that mini map that you just made. <laughs> I don't know why I went there here. Your guy says, hey, shoot me over that mini map that you just made. And so you say, I'm going to send you a Dropbox link. You hit the Dropbox on the bottom. Of course, I turn my Wi-Fi off. Uh, you just hit, you highlight the file. Let me highlight a file. I'm going to highlight a sample file. Uh, you highlight a file. And then you take that file and then you click upload. And then it will, of course, I wasn't connected. I don't know why I pressed upload. And so then it will uh, upload uh, the uh, template, the MIDI template to um, Dropbox or iCloud or um, I think there's a few options of where you can upload to. So um, you upload the file to uh, what was I at? Uh, samples. And then uh, was in. Uh, okay, I don't have the Dropbox option now because uh, it recognizes that my Wi-Fi is off. So whatever. So um, you upload it to Dropbox, and then you, of course, go to Dropbox and shoot the link to your homie, right? Your business partner, whatever. Uh, now, uh, not only can you save um, MIDI templates and files but you can also reload you can load them and reload them of course he would have to load it up if he sent it on. so I'm gonna hit clear all again and then I'm gonna load my fresh map which is the last map that I made and then there's my setting and I'm back to uh, point A where I started with you guys so um, that's pretty much it on this tutorial hopefully this is the uh, final one on the right hand of the screen you'll see my social media stuff follow me up um, and uh, in the description of this video I have uh, links to my drum kits and my sample packs and things like that there's a bunch of free ones that you can just download and then there's also some that you can buy to support this YouTube channel help me to move forward and things like that so I would appreciate that in advance I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to show you guys real quick about MIDI before I go um, <laughs> these 16 keys on the bottom are, uh, are, are triggered for sample control and also key control and so they flip back and forth depending on what you have highlighted. So Beatmaker recognizes whether you have an instrument loaded. Let me load the instrument again. It recognizes whether you have an instrument loaded or whether you're just triggering one sample uh, as an instrument <laughs> because it treats each pad like one individual instrument. So, okay, this is about MIDI. This is cool. So if you think about it, if you have a 64 pad instrument, right? Um do 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 okay you have sixty four um samples that you could place here or one instrument that's mapped out as an instrument across these sixty four pads and then also beatmaker will allow you to go to page two and then you get page three come on go up hopefully this is not crashing uh you get eight pages of uh, pads that you can select hmm. that's really odd that it's not letting me go up to page 8 or maybe it's uh, maybe I have it wrong maybe it's 8 pages of 16 pads and 2 pages of 64 ok I stand corrected I'm glad that I corrected that on on the fly because uh, <laughs> I will be giving you guys the wrong information so all of these can be individual uh, MIDI notes on up to two pages. So these are all different MIDI notes that you can control from your keyboard. Which screen is uh, on the top is the one that you're controlling with your controller, or you can map that out individually if you so choose. So it's really technical, but uh, 
That's pretty much it. Uh, you can map your tap tempo button out to something. Um, of course, everything syncs to the BPM. You can't have two different BPMs. Someone asked me if you could uh, have uh, separate uh, time signatures or separate uh, beats on your workspace, but you have one global uh, BPM for everything. And if you're a guitarist, uh, that may not be uh, good for you if you want to have a song change from one BPM to the next in the chorus and in a different tempo for the bridge. I know a lot of, I was looking at this Led Zeppelin. I know this is unrelated, but this is one of the reasons why Led Zeppelin, uh, Havoc, RZA, Dr. Dre, all of these guys are so great. Led Zeppelin's drummer would play in 4-4 timing, but then his guitarist would play on 3-4 timing and they would all meet up on measure 12 and so it would sound like it was off key a little in the middle of like bar 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 but on bar 12 the drums and the guitars meet again RZA uh, uses uh, samples that are at different freaking time measures tighten and he just stretches them and bends them and that's why his stuff is so butter the same thing with dr dre uh the guys are able to take uh a four on the floor beat loop and then they'll take uh um i don't know let's just say a guitar sample or something like that that may be in uh three four time and, and then stretch it out or shorten it and then it's and then they may be playing it at two four or five four or something and it just it just clicks anyways uh that was just a fun mini fact um <laughs> yeah that shows uh how uh, dry my comedy is so yeah um automation uh, has a little to do with midi as well um in the bottom of your workspace you have uh effects and so you can add an effect let's just say i'm adding bit crusher i don't know whatever and uh, maybe I shouldn't add it there. Let me undo that. Let me do something a little cooler. Okay, so let me highlight auxiliary one and I'm gonna add an effect to auxiliary one. Let's add delay. And I don't have any audio in here. I'm just doing MIDI stuff. This is practical knowledge for you guys. All right, so uh, I have effects routed uh, into auxiliary one, right? Da 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 da, one eighth, whatever. All right, let me go back to my workspace. So inside my workspace, I decide that I want to automate how much of the audio. I don't know, maybe a sample or a vocal. Maybe you have a rapper that records some audio in here. Uh, I I want to decide how much audio I want to route to that delay in auxiliary one. So what I would do is uh, hit the track automations uh, button in the bottom right hand screen. I would select the, I'm sorry, what button was that? The automation button. And then I would go to the uh, delay effect. And then I would, uh, I don't know, let's just say I want to sync it up. Now I had delay here. Uh, on auxiliary one, right? And da 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 da. What I want to do is, uh, I don't want to select. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to uh, um, gather. I'm trying to think of what this. This is the selection button. This is the. I want to call it the pointer button, but it's the highlighter. Uh, so I don't want to select, but what I want to do is draw. This button draws to the. Quantize so every bar it would draw here. So I want to put this on 64th and then I want to make it a little loose, or I can make it free. This one on um, the last one allows you to draw automation freely, and so you don't have to have uh, a certain type of quantize on 
uh, to be able to um, draw in the automation. Uh, and so uh, there's a couple different ways you can, you know, draw the automation. Let me put selection. So your sample would, uh, or your audio would filter through these points. And if you have it quantized to, I don't know, every fourth or sixteenth note or whatever, uh, maybe you have it panned or something every, you know, eighth note or whatever, um, they would filter through this. And so, uh, selected all the notes, I can move them over. Um, for voluming, I will be able to move these up and down. And so, uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, everything on the uh, automation tip. Um, maybe I should do a separate video for automation because uh, MIDI and automation work together but automation is a totally different beast so um, maybe I'll let me let me digress digress uh, pardon me while I uh, back away slowly from that area so um, you guys uh, should have a pretty good grasp on MIDI and I'm hitting undo so many levels of undo <laughs> And uh, I'm going to hit track automations again, get that out of my way, and I'm back to my workspace. Um, you can also uh, put effects on your main out. And uh, one thing that's really dope is uh, the glitch um, that you can set up. And uh, I was messing around with this. Uh, some people do it uh, with their controllers. It's automatically built in. But... Uh, if you have a mix or you have something going to your main out and you want to affect all of the audio um, and you want that glitch effect uh, what you would do and this is audio stuff too but it's MIDI at the same time uh, if you want that glitch effect what you would do is uh, you would go to your effects and then you would select the slicer right because it slices the audio and then you would just highlight uh, the uh, effect that you would want it to uh, affect uh, so we would go with the eight trip trip eight triplet and so now that you have that on um, what you could do or you could route that through an auxiliary um, you would go to the uh, automation section and uh, you would uh, select the draw tool and let me close this window select the draw tool and uh, I'm sorry slicer you would go through that same motion that I had you guys go through and then you would just you know I want the slicer to come in at this area and so here we go ching 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 do, 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 you know or whatever tweak around with it till you figure out what the heck I'm talking about because I have the practical knowledge but I can't really put it into words for you right now so yeah work 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 on the glitch sound effect if that's what you want uh, Beat Maker has a gang of uh, effects uh, that you can tweak around with I'm trying to get back to the effects window so many options um has a lot of uh, effects that you can tweak around with and so uh get to know these joints get to know them. um let's see delete that uh because uh there's there's quite a few and then uh you can uh, always uh go and download uh some effects as well because it, it because it uh does accept uh, plugins plug-in units and you can run effects through audio bus as well um, you can also map sounds out uh, via uh, the uh, piano roll and so uh, that's another tutorial that's that's a deeper MIDI tutorial this is just the basic stuff that I'm trying to teach you how to uh, connect the controller so uh, I won't go too deep. I'll just touch on. Uh, I'll just load a bank. Like this is the ASR machine kit that comes with uh, Beatmaker Three. 
Okay, maybe I just want to play. So these are um, the samples in this particular kit. And they all are mapped out across these keys. And so you could always uh, highlight uh, the map and uh, re uh, edit the way that you want things to sound and place things the way you want them. You could change root notes and uh, low and high keys and uh, you know put samples where you want them to be at. So either way, um, whether you're just controlling samples from your MIDI controller or whether you want to uh, play them with your fingers uh, from the keyboard let's go to the keyboard um, um, that's uh, totally an option so it's Rella it's been another tutorial thank you guys for tuning in make sure you comment like subscribe share turn on that notifications button I'm out of here. Peace.